Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. First up is the one that started it all, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1, Episode 1, Dave the Dumpster. We start in space where astronauts land on the moon that looks like a sand dune and we see a quote unquote dumpster and they just kind of decide to rip its head off. Off to a great start. This unleashes our villains for the season known to one and all as the evil space aliens. And they are Squat and Babu, a troll and vampire slash Batman who do a lot of nothing. Fincer, a goat leprechaun being who is underappreciated and creates monsters. Goldar, a threatening looking non-threat and right man to the evil empress. Rita Repulsa, the empress of evil herself whose voice will make your ears bleed. She thanks the astronauts for letting her out of her space dumpster and asks them not to leave or else they're gonna miss her coming out party and girl I've been there. She decides to attack the nearest planet, Earth. Speaking of which, in the city of Angel Grove and presumed to be California, we see the Youth Center, which is a gym and juice bar where we meet five teenagers with zero attitude whatsoever. The fun-loving dancer and fighter, Zack. The vapid valley girl, Kimberly. The graceful and quiet Trini. The strong and powerful Jason. And the resident virgin, Billy. We also meet two of their sometimes rapey classmates, known as Farkas Bulkmeyer and Eugene Skullvich, better known as Bulk and Skull. The two try to ask Kimberly and Trini out on a date, and then they end up getting flipped onto a conveniently placed mat. We get a nice little moment where Billy is taking Jason's karate class, since apparently the teenagers teach stuff at the youth center as well. And we learn that while Jason is great in martial arts, Billy sucks. And it's nice to see that just because you're smart doesn't mean that you're great at everything and also vice versa. Also, Bulk and Skull want to learn how to beat people up, which Jason says isn't what karate is all about. And uh, then proceeds to show them a tornado kick that could definitely give someone a brain injury. Rita is all moved into her moon palace that suspiciously says Banjo Palace on the front. And she decides it's time to push Earth's shit in via a laser earthquake thing. This causes for alarm at a building on a mountain somewhere where we meet two more characters, Zordon and Alpha 5. Zordon is a great and powerful wizard who definitely isn't out to fight the wicked witch of space and her flying monkey man. And Alpha 5, his robot assistant who does everything Zordon can't do because Zordon's a head in a tube. Apparently he's stuck in like a time warp, whatever the hell that means. He tells Alpha 5 he needs five overbearing and over emotional humans to fight his arch rival, teenagers. Why? I don't know. Alpha kidnaps Jason, Zack, Billy, Trini, and Kimberly via teleportation in the middle of an earthquake because that's not jarring, and then lets them just plop down into the command center like he had no idea what the hell he was doing. Billy gets a boner about the robot, but there's really no time because Zoran needs to tell them the plot of the show. He tells the five what is happening and how they need to take on the power of the ancient creatures that they call dinosaurs. Jason will have the power of the Tyrannosaurus as the Red Ranger. Zack, the Mastodon as the Black Ranger. Billy, the Triceratops as the Blue Ranger. Trini, the Sabertooth Tiger as the Yellow Ranger. And Kimberly, the Pterodactyl as the Pink Ranger. They will also have access to giant robots known as Zords, which I can only assume is Zordon's version of the Trump Tower. He also gives them their transformation devices known as Morphers, a riff on the word metamorphosis, and lets them know that they will be known to one and all as the Power Rangers. It's a shame they don't give a crap about Zordon's agenda, so they basically tell Tell him that his stuff is weird and that they're out of there, but then they just kind of like steal his stuff by taking the morphers because like, screw you man. Suddenly, Rita realizes that Zordon's on Earth and doing stuff, so she sends down a troop of gray clay beings known as the Putties to stop the teens from ever becoming Power Rangers. It's awfully ironic because she kind of escalates this to a place where it didn't need to go because the five had already decided not to do it, but like whatever. The teens try their best to fight against the putties and get their asses handed to them. We also get a nice little racist beat where Zack fights while dancing over to a pair of putties with a hip hop beat pulsing in the background. Oh, the 90s. They decide to use their morphers because they really have no choice, and Alpha loses his mind over this. From there, they're teleported into the city to fight Goldar, who was apparently sent down by Rita, and they do battle on rooftops with Goldar and some putties. Rita is mad about the rangers because they're somehow now good at fighting the putties when they just kind of sucked before, so she makes Goldar grow giant by throwing her wand down from the moon to the earth. The rangers' only choice is to call upon their zords, which each come from different types of land. They quickly come together into a rolling formation known as tank mode and do battle before standing up into the ultimate form which is obviously called the Megazord. They fight Goldar and call on the Power Sword, a random sword that's just kind of flying down from the sky and they kind of threaten to use it against Goldar but then he just like leaves. 
The Rangers return to the command center to celebrate their success and pledge the allegiance to the flag of Zordon. He delivers the five Rangers three rules. One, never use your powers for personal gain. Two, never escalate a battle unless Rita forces you to. And three, always keep your identity a guarded secret, as no one should know that you are a Power Ranger. Kimberly tries to trick everyone into thinking she's not actually comfortable with being a Ranger, since her hair gets tangled up in the helmet with a pretty sweet 90s not joke, and then the five put their hands together and leap into the air, freeze framing into a multi-million dollar franchise. Is this episode nostalgic? Hell yes. Is this episode that jam-packed with things? Yes. It's clear that this show is meant to be a series where children could just jump in at any given moment and know what's going on, so the first episode had to set up everything right away, which personally, I don't really mind. It makes sense for the target audience, although it does collectively throw 12 individual characters at you at once. Stay tuned for episode two, High Five, which would be much more interesting if this show was about real teenagers with access to marijuana and giant robots, but oh well. May the power protect you.